Dusty Baker was in the headlines again after retiring as a manager for 26 years. This is a man who has made hundreds, if not thousands, of headlines dating back decades ago. From him inventing the high five to becoming the oldest manager to win a World Series title, today we'll be chronicling Dusty Baker's glorious career. Is it still Dusty today? On Thursday, 28th of October 2023, Dusty Baker ended his career as a manager a year after he won his first World Series as a manager in 2022 with the Houston Astros. Baker was manager for 26 years with five different teams, first with the Giants in 1993, and with the Cubs, Reds, Nationals, and finally the Astros, where he spent four years. During this time, he won three National League Manager of the Year awards in 1993, 1997, and 2000. He also recorded 2,183 wins in the regular season and 57 wins in the playoffs, which place him 7th and 4th all-time, respectively, in MLB history. But even at 74 years old, Baker still isn't done yet with baseball, as he had said this the day he retired as a manager. This isn't a goodbye, it's simply a see you later. Obviously, the icon isn't ready to let go of baseball just yet. He's loved this game for decades, and it all began many, many years ago in Riverside, California, where he grew up. How to make a Dusty from scratch. The man we know as Dusty Baker today was born Johnny B. Baker Jr. on June 15, 1949. So where did the name Dusty come from? Well, as a kid, Baker liked playing in the dirt, so his mother, a professor named Christine, nicknamed him Dusty. Christine and her husband, Baker Sr., instilled in their five kids a culture of discipline. Dusty, the eldest, got the brunt of the lessons and, of course, the punishment even when his younger ones had been in the wrong. Baker's father had, however, helped his son develop his passion and craft for baseball early on, so that by the time he was just 12 years old, he was all already really good. But as Baker Sr. taught him baseball, he also taught him perseverance. You see, when Baker had chosen to give up baseball when he was unfairly shunned by the major little league team his father didn't allow him, making him believe that there was no going back, no giving up, and that he must finish whatever he has started. Good thing he listened to his father, right? Well, he would be forced to disobey his father years later. You see, Baker didn't just do well in baseball, but in other sports like football and track. But guess what? He even played basketball better than baseball and was given a basketball scholarship to UC Santa Clara. Around this time, the Atlanta Braves also drafted him in the 26th round of the 1967 MLB Amateur Draft. His father wanted him to go to college. But his mother, who had already been divorced from Baker Sr., wanted him to pick the Braves' offer. Dusty Baker followed his mother's choice and in the process cut ties with his father, who had never missed any of his games, it was the reason he had remained a baseball player. Will they ever reconcile, though? We will find out later. A Dusty Road Dusty Baker didn't get what he expected when he signed to play for the Braves. After spending a short period in the minors where he hit 231 in nine games, he was promoted to the majors, but he featured in only five games, including his major league debut on September 7, 1968. The Braves then asked him to join the the U.S. Marine Corps Reserve in 1968. He spent around six years there as an auto mechanic Lance Corporal and came back in 1974 with these words. Wasn't crazy about the idea. It turned out to be one of the best things that ever happened in my life. It helped me a lot. I came home more disciplined. But while he was with the Marine Corps, he continued playing for the Braves. He played in the minors, Class AA Shreveport, and later in Class AA Rich. During this time, he played as an outfield batting 325 in 1970 and 311 in 1971 while also making multiple first team appearances for the Braves in the majors. However, in 1972, he got his full promotion to the Braves senior team as a starting center fielder and boy did Baker finally shine. 
He was the second best batter for the Braves behind Ralph Gar after hitting 321 in his first season. Fast forward to 1974 and Baker helped his teammate and role model Hank Aaron reach a huge milestone. On April 8, 1974, Baker was on deck when Aaron passed Babe Ruth in home runs after scoring his 715th. Nevertheless, Baker had for himself a 256 batting average, 69 RBIs, 20 home runs, and 147 hits. But maybe more important for him in 1974 was the fact that he and his father finally settled their differences. In fact, his father had been present in the stadium the day Hank Aaron passed Babe Ruth in home runs. Anyway, by the time Baker had spent two more years in the MLB, he was being compared to Hank Aaron. However, Baker had his own legend to write, but he wouldn't be writing that legend with the Braves because on November 17, 1975, at his request, he was traded to the Los Angeles Dodgers. Baker's first season for the Dodgers ended with a knee surgery that later pushed him from center field to left field. In 1977. It was, however, a transition that favored him because that year he scored a career high 30 home runs. Interestingly enough, the same day Baker hit his 30th home run on October 2nd, 1977, two historical things happened. First, Baker became one of four Dodger players, Ron Say, Steve Garvey, and Reggie Smith, to record at least 30 homers in one season. But it was the second historical thing that day that would be talked about and be a part of world culture till today. You see, when Baker hit his 30th home run that day, he raced happily to the Dodgers' dugout, where his teammate, Glenn Burke, was waiting for him with a hand raised. Not knowing how to react, Baker raised a hand too to hit Burke's. Boom! With that, the high five was invented. Riding on that momentum, Baker went into the playoffs a complete feral beast. After batting 357 in the NLCS, he was named the MVP. Probably would have gone on to win his first World Series, but the New York Yankees were just too good for the Dodgers, who fell after six games, despite Baker's 292 hitting average. He continued to have good batting numbers through to 1980 when he got his first silver Slugger Award and finished fourth in National League MVP voting. Baker would continue his glorious career with the Dodgers after signing a five-year deal reportedly worth around $4 million. In 1981, he got his first All-Star knot, batted an impressive 320, and won his only gold glove, his second and final Silver Slugger Award. But the 1981 season wasn't done blessing Baker with milestones. Baker had started the 1981 playoffs struggling as he batted an abysmal 167 in the division series against the Houston Astros. The Dodgers still won in five games. He then upped his game against the Montreal Expos in the championship series batting 316 to lead the Dodgers to their third pennant in four years. Baker and the Dodgers will face a familiar enemy in the World Series, the New York Yankees. With another chance to prove his excellence, Baker fell short as he registered only four hits. One RBI and a 167 batting average. Thankfully, his poor performances wouldn't rub off on his team as the Dodgers went on to win the World Series in six games. This was Dusty Baker's first and only championship as a player. The 1982 season blessed Baker with his second and final All-Star appearance. His numbers perfectly represented his All-Star status as he batted 300 with 23 home runs, 88 RBIs, and 171 hits in 147 games. However, the 1983 season will not bring the same sweet tale. Rusty Dusty. Baker's batting dropped to 260, and at the end of the season, he signed with the San Francisco Giants in April 1984. He spent only one year with the Giants and batted a good 292, 32 RBIs, and 71 hits. Obviously, his prime was beginning to elude him. He would play his last two years in the MLB with the Oakland Athletics. His first season with them in 1985, he played in both first base and outfield, where he batted 268 with 92 hits, 14 home runs, and 52 RBIs in 
111 regular season games. After Baker played in 83 games and batted 240 in the 1986 season, it was suggested by the Athletics that he return to the minors in the 1987 season. Baker declined and then decided to hang his cleats for good. Now that the dust has settled, Dusty Baker surprisingly went from baseball to the stock market. We bet you were expecting that he went into coaching immediately following his retirement. However, Baker started working as a stockbroker before he was signed as a first base coach for the Giants. He went from first base to hitting coach after one year. He remained the hitting coach for the Giants for four years. He was eventually promoted to manager in 1993 to begin his illustrious 26-year managing career. It would have been more than 26 years, but Baker had breaks during his managerial career. He was with the Giants from 1993 to 2002 and the Chicago Cubs from 2003 to 2006, but without a management position from then till 2008. The Cincinnati Reds offered him a contract that lasted till 2013 when he was fired. He was off the market till November 2015 when the Washington Nationals signed him to manage them for the 2016-2017 season, following which they also let him go. Baker became a manager again in 2020 with the Houston Astros. Here, he would win his first World Series as a manager before calling it quits. After missing out on the Hall of Fame as a player, there's a high chance that he won't as a manager. This honor would be the perfect way to end Dusty Baker's glorious career. If you enjoyed this video about Dusty Baker's glorious career, check out the video on the screen now, or the one we posted below because we're sure you'll like that one too. Let us know in the comments if there's another baseball player whose journey you'd like us to cover. See you there.